All right, all right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam, we are back with another amazing episode. And today, I have a very, very special guest, a special requested guest. I've been hearing this man's name for quite some time. So, you know, we have to follow the feedback, man. If people are saying they want to hear the story, we got to get the story, man. I'm here with Mr. Perry Jones, man, the owner of Seek Ye First LLC, dump truck aficionado, uh, <laughs> expert. Man, welcome to Truck and Hustle, sir. Appreciate you, man. Glad to be here and uh, link up with you guys. For sure, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. So Seek Ye First LLC, that that has a faith-based connotation to it. For sure. Um, talk, talk to me about that. Well, um, I've always felt from the beginning that God uh, paved the way for me, and so I wanted to pay homage to that and to let it be known what I was all about, as people would see that name and call on that name and request that name, then it means something bigger than me, and it's a witness as well. Got it. When did you start the company? Um, I started way back in uh, 2000. Um, when we started, it was Perry Jones Jr. Trucking, but then I changed the name in 2008 okay. to CQ First Enterprise LLC Trucking. Got it. Got it. Sounds good. And just for some context, what does your business look like now? How many trucks do you guys have? Talk talk about that. We're up to uh, eight trucks now, um, three quad axles and th uh, five tri-axles. Okay. Got mm -hmm. it. And you're based out of? Based out of a little small town called Clinton, Louisiana. Clinton, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're mm -hmm. going to talk about that. So mm -hmm. let, let's get into that. Are you born and raised in that area? Yeah. Born and raised in uh, Clinton, Louisiana, where we... Uh, we call them parishes in Louisiana, so East Feliciana Parish, uh, population probably less than mm, 1,500, 2,000. Oh, wow. Country upbringing, rural area, you know, slapping hogs, feeding chickens, that kind of thing. Got it. So that's, mm. that was your upbringing? That was my upbringing. That's where I learned my work ethic from, being having to do those duties. You weren't asked to do them. You were told to do them. Mm. Mm. Got it. Got it. So tell me about coming up. What type of kid were you? Well, I was a kid um, uh, that liked to have fun, go out, obviously, watch cartoons. <laughs> Those were the days of Voltron, <laughs> He-Man, you know, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, pretty much you went to school, or should I say when you got up in the morning, you had to do those chores as far as the animals go, the farm animals, and then go to school. And then when you get out of school, you had to feed up, as they call it. And then you would do homework and then you if you had time to play, you would play. And so early on, you know, it developed a work ethic in me that you got to work. If you're going to have anything, you got to work. Got it. Mm -hmm. After high school, what you do? After high school, uh, well, I got my first taste of business in high school. My mother opening up a furniture store. And so I rent on furniture store. I was uh, would often uh, senior year, get out at half a day, go over there, work, uh, delivering furniture different places um then they would start they started taking trips and i would basically be running a store at 17 years old mm -hmm. and so i was at that point like wow i like this and uh, before then the plan was to go to the southern university to in major in law because uh, i always had a fascination with that but got detoured one day in a conversation with my uncle my mom's brother who said um Hey, man, why are you going to school? You're sitting on a gold mine, you know, talking about the furniture business with my mom. I'm like, okay, I never thought about that. I took ACT, ready to go. And uh, But at that moment, that was a pivot there, and I began to really look at business, and I liked it. Um, I, I just began to have a love for it. Got it. So tell me about that. So you ended up working for, mm -hmm. your, for your mom's yeah. furniture store? Well, I ended up working at the furniture store after high school. Uh, unfortunately, two years later, I think after that, we had to shut down, economy changed. And so I uh, started working uh, at Louisiana State Penitentiary okay. as a correction officer. All right. What well, we um, gave you that idea to go be a CO? Well, in that particular uh, culture, in that area of uh, state institutions, really are the biggest employers. Uh, we actually have uh, in that parish, that county, there's another prison, but the state penitentiary is like the parish over. Got it. Um, and so... Uh, if you didn't do anything in that area growing up, you knew you could always, that they say, go work for the state. That was a right? good job. And so, yeah, and you could raise the family off of that. And so I started, uh, went there, applied, got hired on, um, 19 years old, like, wow, I'm in here with, you know, these <laughs> hardcore guys. How's this going to work out? But I quickly integrated in and um, did the job and 
thought that that's where I was going to be. Yeah. You know, got comfortable. Only thing, I was on nights. I wanted to go on days. And uh, they kept giving me the runaround. And so one day, a good friend of mine, childhood friend, he also worked there. He leaves after like eight or nine years. I'm like, dude, you know, you, you got that much time, man. You're leaving? And he was like, yeah, man, I'm going to drive trucks. And so I said, well, what you going, what you kind of truck? And he, concrete truck. And so I was like, okay, cool. And so after they kept giving me to run around with getting on days, I said, well, you know what, man, how, how did you do that? What license you needed to do that? And he said, class B, you don't need a class A. And I said, okay, so what's, you know, what's the, what's the roadmap? You know, how, what do I need to do? He said, man, all you got to do is get the CDL book, take the test, and uh, which is outbreaks in general knowledge. I yeah. think it's still like that. Yeah. So, and uh, you uh, take the uh, road test with a third party. He told me who that was. And just like that, I um, took that test, went to the third party, passed the road test, got the license. I was like, okay, wow, now what are we going to do now? Right. Are we going to go ahead and step on out here? You got three years in, you know, what are you going to do? And I just said, you know what, why not? We're going to step on out there. Uh, wife, uh, her uncle had been at the concrete plant 20 something years. So I told him, Hey, man, I got license. Can you get me on? He was like, Yeah, ain't no problem. And the rest is history. That's how I started into, into trucking. Got it. So when you say her uncle, um, what, did he have his own business or was he connected with the no, plant? No, he as worked. An employee? Yeah. Yeah, he worked there. He was a longtime employee of that of that uh that concrete ready mix concrete company. Yeah. Okay, so he got you a driving job. Yeah, he got me hired on as a greenhorn, not knowing nothing. <laughs> Rode with him. He he was going to be the one that trained me. Okay, so talk to me about that experience, that transition into driving. Oh man, truck. it was all I can remember. Uh, is just this thing just seemed so big. You know, getting into the <laughs> truck, I'm like, man, this just all seems so huge. And, um, you know, even though I got the license, I took the road test in the school bus. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's automatic. But when I got into this truck, you know, it's, you got a clutch, you got a, a, a pedal here. And I'm like, you know, and I'm up in here and he's like, you know, Hey, you got to, you know, you got to mash the clutch to go in gear. And, I, and I'm, I'm mashing the clutch every time, you know, in, in trucking, we call that double clutching. Right. Right. And that's how they teach you in school. But uh, experienced truck driver, we float gears. I ain't right. knowing about floating no gears. He's <laughs> like, all you got to do is tack it up, you know, and once you get the RPMs up, that's when you're shifting the gear. Right. Well, easier said than done when you don't know anything. So, so it was a, it was a, it was a learning curve to it because you're trying to learn how to drive the truck, but then, also operate the truck as it relates to concrete, putting chutes on, pouring it out, how wet is too wet. I mean, it was a tremendous learning curve. But he stuck with me, and I guess maybe a month, I began to get the concept of uh, the floating the gears, you know, downshifting, that kind of thing, and uh, basically uh, learn how to do it from practice. And uh, finally, they turned me loose, put me in my own truck. And uh, I'll tell anybody, you learn, you will learn that biggest learning will come when you're also by yourself. Mm. After you've got that foundation, you get in your by yourself. You don't have a choice but to get it one way or the other. Nobody's there that's going to be telling you, hey, you got to do this. That's right. And so I began to love that job, man. It was, and, and, and I tell guys these days, that was in the days of no air conditioning. So okay. y'all, y'all spoiled <laughs> truck drivers, not because that was the days of nowhere. You know, we had to uh, finagle, uh, you know, you take that side window and open it up and then the air will come in like that from going down the road. <laughs> but also the bumblebees in the walls too, right? right. So so that was, uh, it was some good days, man. I really enjoyed myself. It was the freedom of the road, the freedom of being, you know, I'm in this truck by myself and all I got to do is do my job, uh, you know, at, at the pace that I like delivering concrete to these jobs and so the fascination was seeing uh something come from nothing to something Got that's it. what did it for me this form of a house that's that's empty and formed up and then what you're bringing is helping it to become somebody's home yeah yeah so it's the nothing to something thing that that fascinates me and still does even to this day that's right. And and you were still pretty young at this time, right? Were you like yeah. 22, oh, 23? Yeah. When you uh, concrete plant, yeah. Um, let me see. I was at Angola at 19, left after three years. So, yeah, about 22, 23 years old, I'm driving concrete truck. Got it. All right. So, you drive the concrete truck. How long do you work for this this company? So, I was with that company. I uh, That company had bought another company out. So, I switched to another company, another location within the same company because they, they wouldn't give me enough hours. You know, I had a young family. 
they were only giving me 30 hours. They were sending you home. So I noticed every time we would get off the other location, they still rolling. So I said, well, hey, look, man, let me transfer down there, which is in bad, what we know is Baton Rouge. Got it. And he said, okay, no problem. As long as you can get there. I said, well, I got transportation. And so I'm down there working down there 70, 80 hours a week. I'm serious. Got in it. one week, mm. we rolling like that. Sometimes what we call in the concrete business, two o'clock pours, okay. which means you got to be at work for 12. Got it. And then they will still keep you there all day, you know. So I'm rolling seven, eight hours a week, how making $9.15 an hour. I was about to say, how much are they paying you? $9.15 an hour. And so I had to find the sweet spot between, okay, if I make too much and they taking it in taxes, what's the sweet spot where they labor you to see your money? So about 70, 72, 73 hours, start popping that every week. So I'm there about three years. And in that third year, coming to the break room, old man, had several old men there. And uh, the thing in Louisiana is plants. Everybody, if you get a plant job, you good. And so I come into the break room one day on that third year. One of the old men says, you know, you're a young man. You need to be in a plant somewhere. You don't get caught up being here the rest of your life like me. I'm like, OK. All right. And I've always been a magnet to older men listening at older men with their wisdom. And I got to thinking about that thing. He really struck me with that. And I was like, man, you know, I was cool. Right. You know, you thought you was doing it. Yeah. I was like, man, <laughs> you know, back then, six, seven hundred dollars a week wasn't bad. Paying my bills. I'm doing all right. I'm like, wow. And I started replaying. My grandfather-in-law made a statement one day uh, that I thought about when that man said that. He said, that boy worked from dark to dark. <laughs> You know, because when I leave out, it was dark. When I come home, it was dark. Right. And I thought about that. I said, you know what, that old man, right? I said, maybe I do need to get in the plant, more money, benefits, and I could make a better career like that. So I started out on that path trying to do that. And I uh, made a few phone calls, people I know in plants, thought I had to hook up, went, took a test for these people. And then all of a sudden, the hiring that they want to do, they good. They had all the people. They I was like, oh, man, I'm back to the drawing board. Mm. And so I thought, well, man, what can I use that I already know? What skills that I already have? And I was like, well, dude, you got CDL. Try that. That's right. I said, even if you got to go get the class A, why don't you go into trucking? I said, okay, I'm going to look at that. So I started getting the uh, truck paper magazines. I'm sure you all have seen those. For sure. Started looking in there, trucks, truck driving jobs. I'm thinking, I'm still not thinking entrepreneurship. I'm thinking, you know, go go and drive for one of these companies. So I, I think I called Schneider National. Okay. And I inquired with them, you know, about, uh, hey, you know, man, what's up? You know, could I come with you guys? They were like, yeah, we got a program to where we'll bring you with us and train you. I think they still do that. Okay. You don't have to have any CDL. They'll bring you, put you through their program, and then, of course, you're meant to drive for them. And so I inquired about that, and I was looking at that. I was like, okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. Got the information. And uh same time, the friend who left Angola, the penitentiary to do the same thing. He was looking at the same thing. I was like, well, man, we could go together. And then lo and behold, one day in that truck, I saw dump trucks. Mm. And I looked and I saw, and in and, and that area, tandems were the thing. Weren't triaxles yet, tandems were the thing. And so I'm looking and I'm like, man, dump truck. And I say, hmm, you know, I thought about that. I say, I checked into it. You don't have to have a class B. I said, man, I wouldn't have to go to school. I was like, well, man, instead of you're going to do that, Somebody else, you might well stay here. That's right. Why don't do it for yourself? So I started thinking bigger then. Okay, truck for myself. And that's when I got the truck paper again. I'm looking at the trucks, looking at dump trucks, trying to find dump trucks. And lo and behold, we would be in Houston uh, talking to you about this. Performance trucks in Houston used to be right there. I think that was the 610 across from the Budweiser warehouse. A dealership called Performance Trucks had a, a triaxle there okay. for $45,000. I was like, man. That's what I think I want to do. So I called the, uh, I, have, I was a member of a credit union. Hey, look, you know, how much money would you guys uh, give me on the line of credit? They ran my credit, $12,500. I'm like, okay, I could get twelve five. Yeah, I'm <laughs> like, I could get twelve five. Okay. All right. Uh, talking to the guy at the dealership, uh, 45000 He said, yeah, if you got 7500 down, we could finance you. So this is the third year of the concrete truck, right? So I'm like, I'm thinking higher. I'm putting in the hours. If I could do seven, eight hours a week for somebody else, sure enough, I could do that for myself. I could do dark to dark for myself. Listen at this old man. I need to do something else. I'm a young man. Why not? You know, and so 
it seems easy, but it, yeah, it was a process, you know, can I do this? Should I do this? You know, you, you, there's a battle that always takes place between being comfortable and getting to where you want to go. But what I quickly figured out, success comes with being uncomfortable, at least initially. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to step out here. If it don't work, it just don't work. How sure. will you know if you don't know, if you never try it? And so I took that 12 five, called the guy, hey, on the way to Houston, man, I'm going to get that truck. Came in here to Houston. Um, they ran a dyno, dyno test on it. So I knew I felt like the engine transmission, all that was good. Um, and so, boom, dropped them 7500. Here I am, headed back into Louisiana with my truck. Okay. You know, didn't know anything about LLC then, didn't know anything about being incorporated. And at that time, the business is called Perry Jones Jr. Trucking. That's Got it. it. Got it. And I'm headed back. And, uh, and I'm like, okay. So I did research, some research, uh, what I thought was research. You know, I'm seeing the guys downtown on the river offloading barges of limestone off the river because that's where our limestone yards uh, were at in Baton Rouge at the time. Big old piles of limestone. They're running off the yard. they stockpiling. I'm like, okay, cool. I get the truck. I can just go get on that. You know? <laughs> Don't work like that, right? <laughs> but I get the truck, get insurance. So I got about, I think I thought I put the 7500 down, got everything straight. I had about 3500 left to get started. Insurance back then, $300 a month. Diesel back then, 99 cent a gallon, right? So low overhead, they were paying trucks $45 an hour. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm out here. All right, get to the yard. I'm thinking, I'm going to let them know who I am. Hey, I got a done truck. I want to get on this too. And, you know, guy, oh, okay, we'll take your name and all that. Okay. That hurt my feeling. I'm like, okay, I thought I'd just come down here, get in. What's, what's up? Making sure that your compliance is on point is an integral part of any trucking-related business. Today, I stopped by my friends over at Fleet Drive 360 to talk about what they're building to make sure that you can run a successful trucking company. And it's everything from the minute you decide you want to hire somebody through maintaining all of your FMCSA compliance documents for ongoing fleet or, or owner operator truck uh, business. You've got a driver hiring and recruiting module where you'll create driver qualification files, import digital documents. You've got a drug and alcohol module where you can schedule pre-employment drug tests and manage an ongoing testing pool. We've got an accident registry so you can keep your mandated accident logs and even schedule follow-up uh, drug testing for post-crash. We've got vehicle maintenance logs so you can not only maintain the compliance status of your vehicles but also upload your work Work orders and compliance related documents so you're audit ready when they come in. We've got a document repository, fancy words for digital cloud storage of any document that you want, not just necessarily the compliance documents, anything related to your business, post crash videos, performance evaluations. And then finally, you've got the dashboard. And the dashboard's the most important part. You can close your eyes and glance at our dashboard, open them, glance at the dashboard, and immediately know whether or not you're compliant or not, both on a driver, company, and vehicle level. It's one stop shop for all your compliance needs. Right. So one of the guys that uh, had a triaxle, matter of fact, let me back up, at the concrete plant, old man, after talking with him because somebody said his son and him was in dump trucking, I talked to him. He said, you need to talk to my son. I talked to his son. His son told me, say, yeah, man, if you're going to get anything, get a triaxle. So that's a part that I, I left out. Got it. He, he That's how I got on triaxle because other than that, I'd have got a tandem. He said, okay, if you're going to come out here, he said, you need to get triaxle. He's a great guy. Still good friends to this day. So he was on that yard offloading barges. So he said, hey, man, come get in the truck with me. I parked the truck. Come get in the truck with him. He gives me the game. He said, look, this is what you need to do. He said, for this right here, what we're doing, there's a crew for this. He say, if we're at one place, pretty much the crew already has slots. But if we're in two places at one time, he'll take it. You know, everybody at CB Hound, the guy outlaw, that was his name. <laughs> Give him your name and number. He'll call you if we're at two places at one time. So quickly, I'm like, okay, so the only way I can get on this is if they need help. They got their guys. Right. He said, but this is what you do. He said, get the yellow pages. He said, look up all the construction companies in town. Look up all the limestone yards in town. Look at all the dirt pits in town. Call them, give them your name, your number, send your insurance over there. They will call you. Mm -hmm. He said, matter of fact, this limestone yard across the river, they looking for trucks right now. And I said, okay, cool. So I was reeling from that because the game wasn't what I thought. Right. I had this picture of get a truck, go to work, right? Just that simple. And so, okay, regroup. I went across there, started working for that limestone yard. Got it. Cheap. 
I mean, the race was, race was hard for two dollars a ton. Like it was for everything. So you basically figure my truck was hauling twenty tons, so about forty dollars a load. And I'm like, you run all day ten loads. We were making like four hundred dollars. I was like, man, God tight here. But the good thing is the note on the truck wasn't but sixteen hundred dollars. So I said, okay, look, stick with this, learn the game. And uh, $600 a week, one week you got to know it at least, you know. And then the way that I did it, and it's the game I give on, on our channel, is that whatever my bills were, I divided that by four. And that's what I paid myself plus $100 every week. Okay. So if my bills were $2,000, I paid myself $500 a week to cover the bills and an extra 100 Starting out. Got it. And I would literally spend $20 a day on food or whatever, eating, and spend and make that $100 last. Got right? it. Right? So, um, working at this cheap, this line store, you're paying cheap, but it's getting me where I need to be because, you know, $1,600 a week wasn't bad. I paid a note. I'm good one week. Insurance, again, $300. Decent's not that bad. So, I start seeing profit immediately. All right? But, boom, something, something happens. Got the first load on the truck. The truck sits down in the front. What's, what's going on here? Dog on fender is rubbing the tie with the load. Well, um, another game I give the guy people, you got to spec the truck right. This was a rider truck that had been converted from a road truck to a dump truck. Mm. So it's 12,000 pound fronts with two springs on the front, airbags on the back. I'm like, oh, man. So I'm talking, hey, man, what I need to do? You need to go get that front end built up. So go to the, the, the spring place um, that's known for all that in town. Went to them. Boom. He hooked me up, put them springs on there, stack spring, about $1,500 um, thing I had to do. Boom. Put that load on there. Nah, she's sitting up high. <laughs> she doing like she need to do. Boom. Next thing you know, going on jobs. I'm getting, I dumped a load because you got to dump the airbags. Get the airbags back full of air. I'm, I'm, I'm getting stuck on top of the ground like. Everybody else is rolling. I'm getting stuck on top of the ground. What is going on? Airbags. It was like, that ain't really the suspension you should have got. That's what guys <laughs> start telling me. You should have got spring suspension for a dump truck. I was like, well, man, okay, didn't know. Uh, but I'm knee deep in here now, so I got to make the best of it. So um, ran across a friend of mine had a mechanic, and he kind of leveled, uh, did some leveling with my airbags. Um, some other things made it easier for that truck to uh, to be able to be sturdy enough to stop getting stuck on top of the ground. So made that adjustment. So um, from then on, just started building from there. One of the turning points was going into the plants and jobs with the limestone yard. I started handing out the, my card. Hey, if you need a truck for something else. I'm not trying to take their business. They, they haul. We haul limestone to the yard for them. But if you need a truck in this plant on the job, let me know. Start doing it everywhere. I would see people construction. If it was a dozer on site, track hole, don't matter. Even if they hadn't started, I would stop and started passing out cars everywhere. Trying to you just get in with people. And so after months, things, uh, people, those people would call, hey, seven, eight months ago, you gave us your car. Do you have trucks? We got a job. And I was like, I didn't even remember. But I was like, OK, it's paying off. So I started getting jobs like that. Uh, and then finally I hit a good one, Georgia Pacific, which is a paper company owned by the Koch brothers. Everybody know the Koch brothers. It's a paper plant. They wanted me to come in and, uh, bring some guys with me to do a job. I was like, okay. I'm like, well, man, me and these two guys have been working together pretty much off the yard. I said, Hey man, you, I got a job coming up. Would you guys be interested in working with me to do this job? Mm. I'm like, yes, indeed. We ain't got nothing else. you know. <laughs> so we start realizing limestone yard ebbs and flows you know you might work a good week next week you might not give it two or three days it's not consistent so we say we we can get something consistent this is the way to go we went into that plant that paper mill for about two three weeks straight we was like now this is what it's all about right here and i quickly learned okay um i'm subcontracting i'm actually got i'm getting jobs and i got guys still rough around the edge i'm not really realizing what i'm doing but okay guys came in with me so a bump bump big bump in the road was at the beginning Everybody I call, I'm going to these constru contractors. Hey, I got a truck. You know, I want to get to work for you guys. The first question they would always ask is, how many trucks you got? I missed it. The first five or six times companies were doing me that. I'm like, oh, I just got one. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, sometimes they would take my name. Sometimes they wouldn't. I'm like, I'm missing something. What's going on? And then finally, the light bulb goes off. They rather make one call and get 10 trucks. 
than to make 10 calls to get 10 trucks. That's right. That changed the game for my business forever right there. So I tried it out. Went back to them same companies. Hey, man, got a dump truck. Y'all see y'all got work over and such here. You know, I want to get on. How many trucks you got? I got one, but I got access to 10. I work 10 guys with me every day. Oh, okay. Let me get your number right now. That changed the game right there. Mm. And when I figured that out, and so I just say, okay, the key to dump truckers is this. Because I'm one. I know when I'm getting paid, how much I'm getting paid, and you uh, being a man of your word and giving me my money when you say you're going to do it. <laughs> right. That's all a dump trucker care about, how much and when. And I say, well, Pear, if you can, first of all, get it with the contractor to pay on time then you can get these guys to come help you to do the job because that's all the dump truck care about. You get, you're paying me right, and you're paying me when you say you're going to pay me. And boom, I started doing that. I started getting little jobs like that. They paying me, paying the guys. They think, you know, guys are calling me. Hey, we heard you got a job. We heard you got a job. We're we looking for something to do. And we just start building from there. And so I'm about three years in. And then I said, okay, well, I almost got this truck paid for because I had it on three years. Mm. So at the two-year mark, rather, cousin just got out of driving school. I say, hey, man, what you want to do? He said, hey, I'm ready. I'm with it. So I brought him in. I bought a brand, my first brand-new truck, Capital Mac. i never forget Baton Rouge. That truck was $93,000. Long way from where they had now. <laughs> $93,000, a 2002 RD Mac. And that's when I began to expand. I said, okay, man, look, we'll put you in this older truck. I'm going to get in the newer truck. We're going to do this. Start expanding. And um, and this is not really one contractor that I can say my own. This is just hustling. This is yards, dirt pits, just just really just going at it, hustling. And so, but the Lord was blessing. The work was coming. People needed us. Guys were looking out for me. I, I'm always a guy that hung around the older guys. And so the older guys took a liking to me. I'm the young kid on the block, right? I'm only 25 years old. The rest of these cats is probably already 40. So I'm the I'm the new kid, but not only I'm the young guy, but I've always been a guy who's just older me and gravitate to me, and I've always gravitate to them because I just love the wisdom, I love the game that they give, and so I started hanging with those older guys on that crew, and the and the leader of that crew, offloading them bar, just took a liking to me, and um, he say uh, called me one day, hey man, got some barges offloading, and uh, it could be in just say different cities in Louisiana. But in the area, you know, you had to go out of town, stay the night and see them, them hands that those guys, we call them hands, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> them hands that own the crew might not necessarily want to go to Vicksburg, Mississippi, right? Hey, man, I'll go. So, boom, we go. They give you four hours travel. You get your room and you will come from up there 40 hours in like 30 days. I'm like, man, I kind of like this. Mm -hmm. So I took the little spot like that that I was I worked my way up from being way down the list with this guy to the first guy he would call whenever he needed extra truck, whenever they was more than one spot. And then when the, and everybody knows at the beginning of the year, limestone comes from Kentucky, Tennessee, these places, comes down Ohio River, come hit that Mississippi River, three rivers right there, and comes down the river. And so you get you, you know, we see the barge come down the river, 10, 12 barges, man, we already know that's three or four days of work. <laughs> but the key for us was you ain't burning no fuel. I could fill up on a Monday and work on that yard overloading barges the whole week and still be on a half a tank. Mm. I'm, actually, I was burning more fuel going home, coming back, <laughs> than I was on the job. So everybody liked it that. Right. Hard work, it works the truck hard because you're dumping 40, 50 times a day. You're going around in circles, you know, bag up on the river, get the load, come back on the yard, dump it out, go back and get another load. Round in circles all day. But I loved it because low overhead, see the profit, and these rides will pay every week. Right. So – and I tell anybody over time, and I've never, I've always seen this happen on jobs, even in entrepreneurship. If you hang in there long enough, you'll start to move up. Because for different reasons, people don't hang in there. Whether it be somebody's retiring, whether it be somebody's quitting, whether it be somebody going out of business, God forbid. But it just never fails. Something always happens to people. And for me, at least that's been my, in my case where I see, you know, I was like, okay, I don't know if this favor is just happening. Right. But moved up and I became eventually a part of that crew. A part of that crew that offloaded barges uh, for Martin Moretta. You might be familiar with them. Okay. A company like Vulcan. It's Lafarge now. Got Everybody it. knows Lafarge. 
And uh, they had three yards in the area and then three or four other yards we all loaded. So they kept us kind of busy. And that's why I kind of helped to build that foundation. I could have one. Now that I got two trucks, I can do other stuff. But then I can send that truck on the barges and just let it stay over there. So I'm really, really getting a foothold, learning the game. I know the business now in and out. Um, get another truck. I go to three the very next year. I go to three. And so at this point, I come off the truck because it got to be too much to handle. My daughter was born, and it's just too much for me to be on the truck and then trying to do paperwork, trying to take care of business. So that's when I got my first taste of kind of uh, realizing that, okay, now you've grown to a point. Now it's going to be hard for you to be in that truck every day. And now you need to, your role has to change. All right, and that's game right there, mm. right? When you, As you grow, your role has to change. You can't be in the truck. Now, I know some guys that do it, but you're going to have to have a team. You know, like your wife or somebody in the office handling that stuff if you're going to do that. But I embrace the role of, okay, now nah, I need to be an ambassador. I need to be the salesman. I need to be uh, the public relations guy and all that, And so, which is where I'm at now. But I embraced it back then and uh, start, start doing that. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it's amazing. Did you get a word in there? No, I got it. No, I got it. No, that, that's, that's a great story. And I love it where you end it because it's like a full circle kind of mm-hmm. moment. Like you uh, – you got into the game thinking it was going to be easy to get on that job, but you mm-hmm. kind of went through, you know, the process and still ended up being able to become a part of that. Same exactly. Group, right. So that's really dope. So I want to kind of take it back a little bit to okay. uh, the triaxle versus the uh, tandem. Mm-hmm. Right. That that information, that little gem that was given mm-hmm. to in the beginning. What is the, the difference in those two and why is that important? Why was it important for you to get the triaxle as opposed to the tandem? Right. Well, back then, um, tandems were king and. Um, mostly our Caucasian brothers had the tandems, house pads, they handled residential, they had it on lock. And so what was growing at that time was the brothers had triaxles. And so there was a different dynamic going on there. Okay. Do you get it go over here or do you go where the business is going? Cause see, it was growing at the time triaxles. So do you go over here with a tandem? All right. Where it's mostly residential, mostly house pads. Or do you get a truck where the business is going? And I thank God I had the insight to see, OK, this look like it ain't that many. But the ones that do have them, I see what they're doing. Mm. Bigger is better. That's where it was going even back then in 2000. And so that was the difference. The difference in what weight wise tandem hauls about 15, 16 tons. Tracks hauls about 20. So more payload, more money uh, hourly. They pay more money. And so uh, that's the reason why I went that route. Why would you get if, if I mean, obviously, it's bigger to it's better to have bigger. Why would you even get the uh, the, the tandem then? Like, what is it more like a, a cost thing of the truck or like why would people even opt to get the tandem if they could get the triaxle? Well, in that in that context, yeah, now, that in my context. context, they were still doing good. Okay. At that time, they are obsolete now. But at that time, you could get a tandem and probably still, you could probably work. Got it. I'm sure you could work it back then because, again, dirt pads, the dirt pits were rolling. They prefer, some jobs preferred tandems, mm-hmm. put it that way. There were some jobs that didn't want the bigger truck. They hadn't embraced it yet. So tandem still had a market Got at it. that time. Got it. I just took the chance of going bigger because this seemed to be where it was going. Got it. So let me get That's ahead and already be sitting good with what I need. And not have to buy another truck because, oh, wow, I done got the wrong truck, you know, and have to change. We are here live at OTR Solutions HQ. I'm here with my partner, Jonathan. Man, listen, factoring is an integral part of the transportation industry. Why is factoring important? Absolutely, Ramel. In this economy, in this market, cash flow is king. Cash flow is the key to growth. If you have a young trucking company or if you've been in the industry for years and you want to take that business to the next level, we're absolutely a company that can help. So I hope you'll give us a call today. Let us know what we can do to help you out. Get the rest and roll with the best. Let's go. Okay. So where you kind of ended your story, you have three trucks now, right? Mm -hmm. At that time. At that time. And you're working, you're doing the limestone, right? Mm -hmm. But now you get out the truck, Mm -hmm. right? So... Tell me about that transition. You start more so working on the business as opposed to in the business, becoming you know a CEO of your right. business. So tell me about how you start growing and scaling your, your company. Right. Well, at that time. Um, and what so year I, is this now? Again, This is around 2007, 2008. Okay. Got it. So I got three trucks. Um, I'm running them. Got three guys driving them. Um, night work wasn't real prevalent back then here and there mostly. So we're rolling just days, weekends, things like that. 
And uh, so my goal was, and I had I did DBE with the state, so I was a DBE certified firm, but for some reason never got a job. You know, it just never happened at that time. And so uh, I went up to four, got another truck. And for some reason, I could not keep that fourth truck working. I just don't understand what happened. Uh, and an old man had taught me, so I always keep an odd number. And um, But I just could not keep that fourth truck, so I sold it. <laughs> I got off <laughs> real quick. I just couldn't keep it going. Okay. You know, and I was having to, you know, just messing me up because I'm having to jump on here. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to sell it. I got back to three. So I sat there at three. And um, this is 2007. And I don't mind saying this. Unfortunately, went through a divorce. So I pulled back. Not knowing how that go turn out, so <laughs> so I went to war. I said, like, okay, I went and bought a brand new truck. I said, well, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm gonna keep one brand new, and that way I know I got a way of making my living. So it's self preservation so at that you time. Sold the others. I sold, got rid of them. Okay, I got one truck. So that passes through, and then now this is 2008. Let me show you how the man up upstairs works, man. Big job in town. I mean, in my county. Big job, probably the biggest job that ever been in that county. 20, at least 20 mil. So the dirt pit guy in town, we talk. He says, hey, man, I'd like for you to handle the truck and you think you can get some of the Baton Rouge guys to come help us. I say, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm like, this is the one right here. We always, everybody, every dump truck always waiting on that one. I say, this is the one that's going to change my life right here. And, man, another dirt guy up there who – I had had some some problems with in the past. He ends up getting the job. Okay. Oh my God, that messed me up. I said, okay, well, that's that. I mean, it was a major restructuring of the highway. I mean, it was a big one, man. Well, lo and behold, he couldn't handle it. So a dirt guy in Baton Rouge gets it. So they start. It's somebody I work with. So they start calling me. Hey, you go up here. I said, well, hey, look, you know, I'm right here. I mean, we right here in town. And so I started working up there doing a little work on that job all right oh right, well hold up let me back up let me see if i got that right that job had started in town during the time of katrina okay katrina had hit okay well i show i sold some trucks we got some more new trucks because this y'all need to hear this katrina hit new orleans people are calling for trucks like crazy crazy me i goes out there and i done bought two more new trucks Sold two, bought two to still make the three. But these trucks had the high lift gate. The other ones didn't. Okay. We're hauling debris in New Orleans, right? They caught the levee breach, all of that. We worked on that levee breach. So they're calling us down there. We working. I'm like, oh, man, $90 an hour. This is big money. This is unheard of money for us because we're only at like 55 now. We go down there, do that, fill that breach in. We're down there uh, trying to help these people with the hurricane. Got paid to for got paid from that company. Another company comes out of Atlanta in town looking for trucks. We work for this guy nine dollars an hour. Got paid the first week. Second week we got stuck eleven thousand dollars. We ain't got paid to this day. But I done bought these trucks, <laughs> right? And that's when go through the divorce and end up getting rid of that. So y'all need to hear that though. But this job in town had started at that time. Got it. All right. So I had worked out there. They called me. I go out there and I work. So then. My uncle was driving from one of my trucks. He got in good with one of the farmers out there. So this is still 2005, 2006. Real good. All right. So the guy says, hey, I got another big one coming up that I'm going to be over in the next county. Same county where the penitentiary at. I said, okay, 25 minute ride. So while I got a little piece of that one to end, that ended. A couple months later, divorce is over. Got one truck. Get a call from that guy. Hey, man, come over here and talk to me. I'm over here on the job. We set up. We about to get ready to start over here. Okay. This is a huge job, $20 million. I said, okay. He said, what, what can you do for me? I want you to handle the truck for the job. I said, okay. Gave him the price. He said, okay, that sounds good. I'm going to use you. He said, you helped me out on that last job over there. Your uncle was doing, did a great job for me. He was stealing. So, <laughs> so we are hauling the strap to the strap, y'all. He keep the money, right? <laughs> so he says, I'm going to use you. So, okay. And, man, that guy called me, said, give me three trucks. And we started working on that huge job over there, redo the road over there. That changed my life. I got that job. Then there was a two-part section. They got the next section, another $20 million. And from 2008, I had one truck. 
quickly got another truck. Nine, quickly got another truck. I went back from one to three within about a year's time. Hauling wet batch concrete at night, the dirt work, the whole nine. We are on this job, Ramel, three years. Mm. That job changed my life, 2008, 2009, 2010. So I'm sitting good. Still at three trucks. I'm buying, selling, but I'm still at just the three. And so we roll that with these people. So I get in good with this company. So they're they're getting other jobs around the uh, the Baton Rouge area. So they're calling me. I'm doing work, other jobs for them now. We done finished the big one in 2010. I'm working with them 2014, 15 on other jobs. Still at three trucks, doing good. That was like my sweet spot three for some Got reason. Got it. So had been on the truck and went, went back on the truck after the divorce. So I'm out there. Get back to three. I come back off again because I'm at that level now. Okay, I need to be able to to handle other business now. And we were, let me say this, I subcontracted about 20 to 25 trucks at one time on that job. Mm. That was a huge job. Got it. And so I'll give this game. A lot of people don't like to talk about this, but it's, it's the game. I made money off the subcontract on that job. It was enough to pay me to where I didn't have to. It was what I would be making if I was on the truck. Right. Right? right. So we were basically doing a thousand dollars a day on subcontract. You doing like ten percent? No, we was doing about like it was about an hour. I was I was just making five dollars an hour. Of course okay. I got crucified for that. Got the it. brothers were like, Why well, are you taking that? You know, <laughs> other people are making ten or fifteen, I'm just taking five. Yeah. But five, you figure five dollars and I'm working twenty trucks a day. Okay. Right. So I was making a thousand dollars a day just off the trucking. Right. Working these guys. Right. So I'm chilling. I'm good. This is good. Five thousand <laughs> yeah. a week just just in that. And like I said, that job changed my life. So fast forward to 15 to 16, um, we finishing up this company who I'm riding this horse now six, seven years. They, they not getting no more jobs in the area. Right. So, all right. This thing is changing a little bit. All right. So we branch out to other people. So we get up to around 15, 16. I was like, OK, you know, I've been out here 15, 16 years. At this time, Romel, it was probably went from when I got into the game in 2000, it was probably. 25, 30 triaxles in Baton Rouge. Mm. Katrina blowed the population of East ba of Baton Rouge up. People relocated. So Baton Rouge went from like 150, 200,000 people to like a half a mil. During the height of the, 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 the everything going good, eight, nine, Baton Rouge went from like 30 triaxles to about 200. Wow. And guys came in lowballing. The market got oversaturated. Oh, yeah. They started lowballing the price. I think if they would have kept the price okay, it, it would have done okay. But here was the major shift, too, we had to adjust for. The Caucasian brothers, who had dominated the tandem market, now done got triaxes. That's right. They shifted. They realized the shift now. So tandems, you might see one or two on the road now. Now, all those guys, so you got guys that's got, and they come out here big. They coming out 10, 15 trucks. So now... It's like three of them. They came out. They like they rode in 40, 50 trucks, just them alone. And they got dirt pits. So they had the advantage because now they can supply the dirt and the trucking. Mm. So the, the brothers and the rest of the guys start hurting a little bit. Like, wow, okay, that just took a, a major patch because everybody, all the contracts had to call us. We had the bigger trucks. <laughs> right. They liked the production. Not anymore. Now they ain't got a necessary to call us. That took a part out of it. You know, it's not a racial thing. It's just the reality of what it was. Right. And so they took a plug out of the business. But now... Nah, he was just a small piece of the pie for a, a small, a larger group to to fall up, fall for, or yeah. to go for. And now these guys coming in, rate is like prices. sixty. Now they doing it for fifty. Wow. They doing it for forty five. Man, it got tight for for a minute, you know. So I said, okay, now I see the shift here. I come back down to one because I know I said, well, I know I can make that <laughs> one, just, you know, and I can get back on the truck myself. One thing I do know how to do is that, and I love it. Yeah. So. We up to around 16 to 17 now. I get back in the truck. I said, okay, got one truck. I'm cool. Um, I had a 2007 mag. I said, well, okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this truck. So this is um, this is 18, right, for Cola. This is 18. Yeah, this is 18. This is 19 because Cola was 20. This is 19. So okay. I got one truck, and I said, okay, one more. I had, had two. I had two. Engine went out. I bought an older truck. So let me let me share this. This is game two. While I had that big job, I shifted into another philosophy that didn't work out too well for me. Because uh, I had bought new trucks. And then I'm like, 
while I was hiring these guys to work with me on that big job. I'm bagging up in the truck one day to dump on what I worked out there. And this guy's got a truck about 20 years old. And it, it, it's, I said to myself, I said, nah, you buying these new trucks? I said, but this joker here ain't got no note. Then pulled it out the bushes <laughs> and making the same money pretty much, except for the five dollars you making off him. Right. And the guy had two or three trucks like that. And I was like, you might need a shift. And, and instead of this, maybe you ought to go try some used trucks out. Less overhead, more profit. So I had shifted to that philosophy. <laughs> that didn't work out too well because I started having more maintenance issues. Right. And so I buy this truck for thirty thousand uh, dollars. Engine goes out in like six months. Put another engine in. That engine go out. So I'm on the hook for like thirty thousand in rebuilds. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm not even finna put that back on the road. It's too old. Why I keep investing money into that? So I had this one good truck. I say we need to upgrade. If it's gonna be just you, you need to upgrade, and you're gonna be all right. So I upgraded to a. 13 this is this is 19 this is a 13 so that truck was going good going good all right no problem COVID happened we still working while everybody was shutting down we actually working a job in my pet in my county um federal money to clean out the dishes ditches okay I work I was like man this is all right oh, we good over here so while everybody shut down we were still in the truck working that was one of the good things about construction. A lot of construction still went on because, you know, as long as you got your mask on, you're out in the truck, wind blowing. The thought was you ain't got to be around people. Nice. Still Contact do the work. Yeah. So we still work. So I said, okay, this is going pretty good. We would have made it through COVID, 2020, and I think uh, 21, I got another one. I got, a, I bought an 18 at that time, upgraded a little more. So I got a 13 and 18. This is 2021. Start a YouTube channel. I said, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to start helping guys. You know, I'm on my way out. You know, I've been in here 20 years. I think I'm going to do four or five more years. This baby girl is about to get into high school, and this is going to be it for me. I'm going to go in here and look into doing something right off into the sunset. <laughs> and uh, started a YouTube channel and um, started helping people, consulting, that kind of thing. And then the business changed. Start looking, I'm like, Baton Rouge is blowing up. Where all this work coming from? Okay. So I got in with this company um, who had been working around the area. I said, well, I'm going to start work. I'm going to go ahead and get in with these people. So I worked with them, saw what they had. And like I told you guys, I don't know. It's just the strangest thing. Look like when I go places, other people leave, which allows me to move up. Right. Two outfits pulled out on this company they were supplying them with like 20 trucks they pulled out so these people in the immediate need for trucks so i get both trucks in start working with them what are you doing asphalt as road building road building asphalt the whole nine i said okay well cool this is 21 start the channel i'm like still not thinking i'm finna go back up i'm like but then i caught fire from helping people it's contagious you know you help people i was like well man this this may not be it for me. Right. Maybe it shouldn't be for me. So I'm processing this. Do you want to deal with all this? The more I'm questioning that, the more God is opening the door. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get another truck. I guess I'm going to get a third truck. We know three is our sweet spot. The work is there. No problem. Mindset is you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. No way. So let's, let's get, we got three. We keep two with them. We'll work one. Take your other stuff. You channel still going. I'm getting, ins I'm inspired. I'm passionate. I'm, and it kind of renewed my fire. The channel did. I was like, well, man, I, I was like, I might hang around here a little while. And then, so I got the three. Craziest thing happened. I buys the third truck. My finance guy calls. Hey, man, the very next week, it's got two quad axles that just arrived out of South Carolina. You want them? The salesman, I mean, I'm like, what? I said, man, stop playing. I said, you serious? I say, I might do one. I said, I don't think I can get two. He said, well, do you, you want to come see these trucks? I went down and looked at the truck. I was like, wow. Okay. I'm thinking, I said, man, the company in Baton Rouge plant don't have no quad access. Now, you can provide something that they don't have, mm. which makes you valuable. Right. Talk to the guy, truck for him. I say, hey, man, I'm thinking about getting some Quartax. I said, what you, you, you think you can plug? You think you can use me? You can commit to me? If I commit to you, he said, yes, indeed. 
talk to my finance guy. Hey, I know you said I could do one more, but you think you can get both of these done? Let me work on it. Came, call me back. Man, let's do it. You got it. Mm. And I went from two to five last July, just like that. Got it. So I'm like, okay, man. <laughs> I'm like, all right, who gonna drive these things, right? right, right, right. <laughs> you know, so worked it out with drivers. That came easy. So we're rolling five now. Yeah, and now the quads are more weight, right? Right, exact. Quads are in Louisiana, seventy five thousand. Yep. So twenty three. 24 tons. Got it. You know, more payload. I say, okay, about an hour, $10 more an hour. Okay, more money, bigger. You know, that's the way the business is trending. Everything is going bigger. All right. And so let me drop some game right here. For us down there, the reason, another reason that's driving it to trend bigger, the CDL, a driver, there's a shortage. So down around New Orleans, I found out those guys are getting the quads and the quints because it's easier to find a B driver mm. than it is a driver. Got it. Wow. Okay. Because the quink can haul 80. That's what a trailer haul. Right. Right. So that shifted the dynamic then. Okay. So you got to go bigger. If you're going, if you're going to do this, you got to continue to go bigger as well. So I had a, uh, went on and ordered a brand new quad axle Mac. It finally made it in January this year. That took me to six. All right. I sold one. I sold the 13. Got rid of it. Sold the 18. Got rid of it. My goal was, okay, we're going all new now. I say, I ain't fighting it no more. It is what it is. Right. The work is just coming out the wazoo, uh, you know, and, and I, that's always been a struggle for me. And that's why I can tell people, you know, we be striving to be comfortable, but success requires you at some point to be uncomfortable. And I just said that, you know, I see God favors it, i.e. the name. I'm not going to block anything that he wants to do. And so he's just continuing to open the door for the work. And uh, another company, I got another contractor to handle their everyday work. So I'm dealing with two contractors. I handle their everyday work. And so um, bought another one in November, Western Star, Triax. I went back with a try because here's the thing. I got to stay versatile with both because there are some jobs in these neighborhoods for the asphalt company. You need that try because some of these neighborhood streets are are tight and you got to be able to maneuver. Yeah. So that's why I got a mixture. I got three quads and I got five tries in order to, to keep that maneuverability going. But I'm still going big. I want to quit now because I say I got to be I got to try that at least before I quit. So I'm up to eight now thinking about selling one because that old man taught me that odd number. Yeah. For some reason, it works. You know, is that a is that a real thing? Like, is it? I've heard that before. Yeah. Too. It, well, like, here's the, here's what, the, what's the logic. Here's the logic that? rather behind that. If you got when I had the three trucks, if one goes down, two can pay for them three. But if you got two. That that second truck catch a hard time carrying the weight of that first one that's down, mm. right? Because think about it like this: on a scale of one hundred percent, if you got two trucks, they fifty fifty. If one goes down, one truck got to carry one hundred percent. But if you got three truck, one goes down, they're thirty three, thirty three, thirty three. Two trucks carry sixty six and two thirds. Whole lot better chance of carrying the weight until that other truck gets gets fixed. Got it. All right, five twenty 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 twenty. One goes down. Four can carry the weight of that fifth one until it gets up 80%. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that logic just keeps on working at the uh, odd number. At the odd. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, and it just, it, it's a strange thing, but it works, <laughs> man. It's a strange thing, but for some reason it works. So I've always tried to stay at the odd. I got a cousin of mine that's going to buy this, uh, this is one of these tries. So I'm going to be back at the seven. And I just decided, I said, we're going to see how that works. And I'm going to just sub out the works. I really want to be a blessing to guys in our area by working them with us. So I'm going to just sub out the rest. And now a quick segment from our sponsor, Roll by ADP. As small businesses continue to scale, their impact strengthens and they hire and build more connections within the community. So, Perry, when did you decide you were ready to expand your operation? Um, on last year, when the work increased, I saw the need to expand. Got it. What features would help smooth out the process of onboarding employees to payroll? Mm. Um, I guess just some something that would allow for easy intake, uh, uh, not real too technical that would make it hard. 65 percent of small business owners are likely to invest in technology that makes automation easier. What, if any, tech features, capabilities would you want in a payroll app? Um, being able to calculate the uh, Fed, state and FICA taxes. So we can properly and generate up uh, um, pay stubs. 
Perry said that having a payroll solution that is easy for employees to use and can calculate payroll and tax withholdings is essential to address your business needs. With Roll by ADP, you can manage payroll and tax filings effortlessly with just a few taps. For Truck and Hustle listeners, Roll is providing you with a special offer. Get your first three months free of running payroll and then only pay $24 a month plus $5 each employee. To learn more about Roll, visit rollbyadp.com slash truck and hustle. Now let's get back to the show. Got it. So you've you've constantly kind of sold, bought, kind of. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So what, when you so when you're selling your trucks, how do you how do you go about doing that? Are you yeah. trading them in? Or are you selling right. them on the market? What are you doing? Well, here's the game behind that. You make money both ways. So not only are we, and this is a million dollar worth of game right here. <laughs> this is how truckers can grow their wealth. You keep the truck three years, sell the truck. My dealership is actually bought. They buy. They buy back from me. So and the, I don't do no trading. This is straight cash money, okay. right? So the dealership will buy it back, or you just sell it on truck paper, private owner. I mean, because there's still a truck shortage, and people can't get new trucks in on time. It's still taking a year. They are willing to buy good used trucks. So what I do is, I keep the truck three years. At that three year mark, you to knock down your interest. You're into equity now. Right. And so my goal is, is on each truck, I'm trying to clear 50, 60 grand. So what you do is keep it three years. You order a new one, keep it three years, sell that truck. You pocket the 50, 60 and you build your wealth through through that way as well. Mm. Right. Yeah. And you just continue to stack paper like that. Next truck, make three years, sell it, pocket the 50, 60, if not more. I'm just being modest with that. The way this market is now, I know some guys are making 70 and 80 off the sale. Yeah. Right. But you pocket the 50, let's just say between 50 and 80 grand, you stack that, build your wealth over here, go get another truck for nothing now. And just repeat, rinse and repeat. And that's how you build your wealth over here. And just think about if you do that over the course of 10 trucks, it's 500 grand. Modestly at the, it's just, just 50. Yeah, Yeah. And you build your wealth over here. Right. And that's how you can become debt free house paid for free and everything else that you may want to do on this side. So I look at, okay, this is business over here, but this is a whole nother avenue in which I'm building wealth by just the sale of the trucks. Uh, just say, let's just say certain folks have been doing it for years. <laughs> I just, I just had to learn the game. You know, why are these guys getting truck three years and selling them? And I had one to share it with me. He said, this is what you do. He said, you make money both ways. You make money in trucking, but you make money off the truck both ways. Right. Right. And when you look at it from that point of view, and you add in the money you made off the sale with the money you made off of the working the truck. Look at how much you've increased your profit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Is there a way to understand like what the trucks will be appraised for or the yeah. value of them? How, how oh, yeah. do you go about doing that? Oh, yeah. My dealer, uh, just call the dealer. Somebody was asking that on uh, last night. You just basically, the dealer, somebody was asking me, was there a Kelly Blue Book for trucks? Right. I hadn't found one yet <laughs> that is public. Now, the dealers, they got one. Yeah. And so my guy, he pretty much always can tell me, give you an example. On that 13 that I had, um, I had paid it down. I had kept it three years. I had paid it down to 55. I sold it to the dealer for 115. Mm. He's going to turn around and sell it. He ain't trying to make but at least five. He's going to sell it though for about 125. Right. It didn't stay at the lot three weeks. Gone. Right. So the dealer will be able to give you the value uh, of what it is. And you can just kind of check. You can look on truck paper, see what the that year making model specs are going for. But uh, now is a good time. The market <laughs> is, is, is high. It's high for used trucks on one end of buying them. But also at the same time, once that resale happens, though, you'll be able to get your money back out of it that way. And uh, the thing I try to tell guys and it happens, guys fall in love with trucks. Anything that's an asset, you can't fall in love with it. If the price is right, I'll sell anything. <laughs> I'll sell my house right now if the price is right. That's right. But guys be falling in love with you. Oh, you know, it's clean. It's my rig. Falling in love with it. You can't look at it like that. You got to look at it. This is an asset that's designed to make money. And if somebody wants to give you premium amount of money for that asset, why not let it go? Go get another asset that ain't costing you nothing out of pocket to go get the other asset. That's right. It just makes sense. Yeah, 100 percent. Right. But the mentality is that has to change is, man, I can't wait till I get this note paid for. I can't get to wait till I get this truck paid for. Then what? You're paying a note or you're paying Uncle Sam, one of the two. I'd rather pay a note. 
right? Yeah. Guys think they're going to ride off into the sunset truck paid for, and now nah, I'll be able to just take that note and pocket that. Yeah, you might do it a year or two, but sooner or later, the, uh, the maintenance is going to get you or because you don't have that note to help you with your taxes, you're going to pay somebody. Mm. So why not just keep on rinsing and repeating? You're getting the full depreciation for the three years, so it's benefiting you that way. You're selling it, going to make a, a lump sum, and you made money off the truck. How can you lose like that? <laughs> Making huh? money three ways. Yes. Now nah, that makes a That's lot of game. sense. That makes a ton of sense. All mm -hmm. right, so um, now you have a mix of, you said the quads and the tries, right? You said you have seven. Well, you have eight, but eight, you're going to go eight. back down to seven potentially, right? right? All right, so just tell me like the mix of what you what you're doing right now, like currently in work. Like, where do you have the trucks working? Mm -hmm. What what does the business look like now? Right, pretty much on a daily basis. Um, that road building company, uh, asphalt, you know, which is comprised of what milling, tearing the road up, uh, that kind of thing. That's pretty much every day. Um, uh, that's one company. The other company that I have, uh, they're doing a the road as well. It's kind of like the same thing. That's kind of really what I specialize in. I like road building because you're gonna be there from uh, the beginning to the end, right? Uh, some of their jobs we're doing now, we're at the end part, which is um, putting dirt on the shoulder at night, right? And so I love road building. So every day, that's pretty much what we're doing. I do other stuff, haul limestone, different things every now and again, but pretty much 95% of what we do is going to be road building. So it's just pretty much uh, dispatching them out to these different jobs, go here, go there, and uh, work on these jobs, milling, hauling asphalt, Hauling dirt to the side of the road, milling. Sometimes it's milling to the shoulder of the road, um, patching where they dig out and patch it. Um, we're starting now on a night job, 10 mile stretch. We'll be there about a year and a half. They started patching. That's always the first process with this company. They'll get out. Uh, they'll go and mark the uh, parts of the road that's got a bad foundation, dig it out. Go back with asphalt. That's what they call patching. Once they patch that whole 10 mile stretch, both sides of the road, then they'll come back and start milling it all. Yeah. They'll mill it all up both sides. All right. Now, on this particular project, they got to go down to the dirt. We love them kind. Because, see, a good mill and overlay, they don't last. They, they don't be as long. But a good down to the dirt saw seedman, you'll be there a while. Right. Because they got to once they get the top layer all the way off. See, in milling, they might not mill all the way down to the bottom layer of the mill before they put the asphalt back on top. But when you're dealing with all the way down to saw cement, everything comes up. Mm. They got to get all of the of that milling up and then they come through and saw cement, get it ready. And then we'll come back and lay the asphalt over it. Got it. How how do you uh full, full, get the full utilization out the truck? Because you said you have day work and you have oh, night yeah. work. Oh, yeah. So are you like slip seating? Are you having guys on nights to talk about that? How yeah. That oh, yeah. That's 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 what I call it. The double dip on the town. The guys get a kick <laughs> out of there. The double dip. Well, what we do, um, what I, what I the way that I transform my business in that regard, once I scaled up this, 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 what I would call the last go round, hopefully, of my life. Um <laughs> I saw something. I was like, okay, with that company, they love to work nights. This is the first company, that asphalt company, that I've worked with that loves to work nights. I mean, it's just normal operating procedure for them. And when I saw that and that they work nights, I said, okay, what you got to do, let's specialize in this. This is Lanyap. In Louisiana, we call Lanyap extra, right? And so that's Lanyap. I said, because we tell people, you budget off of Monday through Friday. If you, you ought to be able to make the business ought to be able to take care of itself Monday through Friday. Weekends and nights is lanyard. That's extra money. That's Texas tea. That's gold. That's a cherry on top. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I went at it a different way this time though than past when we did do it. I, I got full time night guys. And what I've been fortunate in is to find retired guys that they don't want to do nothing but night. Right. I thought that would be a hard thing to do at one time, but it amazed me that there are older retired guys that just that don't mind working five days a week at night. And once I start connecting with some of those guys, I start to say, OK, how many we're going to run at night? We're running just say, for instance, eight that day. We know we're going to work eight during the day because that's 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 your bread and butter. But how many are you going to run at night? Last year on those jobs, we ran five trucks at night. Mm. Right. And so we saw the benefit in that. Here's the benefit of it. That same truck, the only overhead is the driving the fuel because the same insurance is already paid by right. day shift. Right. Right. The same note is paid by day shift. 
So not on overhead at night is the driver and the fuel, therefore increasing the profit. Right. So now your extra work is actually more profit. Mm. All right. And so when I start looking at that and looking at the numbers, I'm like, wow, the double dip is where it's at. That's how we offset the cost of this insurance and really leapfrog ahead. Ramel, it leapfrog our bottom line so far ahead last year. I was like, wow, I cannot believe this. This is this is this is this is the kind of revenue we've always dreamed of. We've always saw other folks make and never thought that we would be here. Yeah. It's that night. It's that night work. I'm telling you, man. Look, <laughs> and I don't even put all of them out that night. My, uh, matter of fact, the guy uh, with the company called the other day. He says, "How many are you gonna give me at night? We getting ready to kick off. When we kick off, why? So I'm gonna give you five at night. So I'm not trying to run all eight at night. Uh, five. That way, I don't have a whole lot of stress on me because it, you know, things are gonna happen with drivers, and uh, and finding that particular guy that wants that isn't easy they're there but it isn't easy so we went through some changes sometimes sometimes i had to step out there and say okay well i guess i got to go tonight you know right you know it throws me off messes me up <laughs> but i'm like okay you know i'm so driven that it, it, it'll bother me ramel if i leave money on the table that's, that's what i call it it right. bothers me man i can't sleep at night <laughs> if, if i know that that truck went out and i could have went well, I missed it for some reason it bothers it takes me a day or two to get over that and so because i'm so driven like that i i want i call it maximizing your potential Every single day, every single night, let's get all that we can get that's possible. And I think that's a that's a key to success. So the way that I set it up is just basically um, I got my normal eight guys, my regulars on days. And then I got five guys, uh, three of the five, which are regulars. They, they work at night. So I know I got them. And then these other two, I kind of have to juggle. I got like a mix of like four or five other guys. This guy might not can't do but two days. This might not can't do but one. But I make it work between the four or five to keep them other two at working at night. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. And and those jobs are paid hourly. Paid out. Everything's out. All of them are hourly. And you Everything. prefer you prefer hourly I as love opposed it. to like tonnage. I love it. Gotcha. All right. One of the things that I think most guys underestimate when it comes to that ripping, I'm ripping and running, it is it, it's stressful. Number one. Because you're dealing with traffic, these people in these cars, you know, they just don't pay no attention to us truckers. So it's less stress, number one. Number two is less wear and tear on the truck. Because when you got that 25, 23, 24 tons, and I don't care who it is, if you buy the ton, you got a little bit more gusto with you because you got to turn that load. Right. And you trying to think of, you trying to get it there safely but quick as possible to get it off to go get another one. That's wear and tear. That's also fuel. But when you buy the hour, you know, guy gonna pretty much he'll drive the speed limit. You get another head in once while I act like he's driving, working by the load, but he really by the hour. But for the most part, he gonna be relaxed. He gonna take his time. He gonna stay out of that fuel tank. It's less wear and tear. And then at night, everything's slower anyway, just to use night. It's slower anyway. Right. So I just prefer and love by the hour because it takes the stress off of the driver and the stress off of the truck. Got it. And what's the range of pay that you'll get for those hourly uh, runs? Uh, at night, pretty much uh, the quads right now in Louisiana. I know we're behind time. Some of the guys probably going to see this and be like, wow, that's all they're making. <laughs> but Louisiana, that's Louisiana. Um, you can get anywhere. I'll give you the range because of the difference with different companies. Right. But the tries are eighty between 85 and 95 an hour. The tries, the quad axes are between 95 and 110. Okay. And it just depends on who you work for. The bread and butter, butter company is the lowest, but I'm working every day, right? Mm -hmm. And then they were giving us fuel surcharge, which just went down. So watch this. When COVID hit, the bread and butter company of mine pay 85 an hour, but they was giving us, we were getting 12, 14% fuel surcharge. And when you do the numbers, we really was getting 110. Mm, it, it averaged out about got $110 it, it. an hour for the try. Got it. Yeah. Right? So they just, because fuel went back on the Gulf Coast average of 350. So now the fuel surcharge is no longer existing. So now we're in their ear now. Okay. So, you know, it's time for a raise here now. <laughs> right. And, and, and unfortunately, some companies, you got to show them they're from Missouri. When they struggle to get trucks, they're going to realize then, okay, we got to do something. Sometimes some of them, you, these companies, you got to show them. Yeah. Is that something you have to go directly to them and it's kind of negotiate yeah. that? Yeah. Well, the problem is, it would work a whole lot better if all everybody yeah, would get everybody together. Got together. But the problem is some guys are afraid. But I'm going to make the plug for myself, you know. I'm gonna, <laughs> hey, man, uh, you know, look, you know, we, we, we need a raise. We need more money. 
you know, and because uh, cost is always easing up, if, even if it's just by a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So has this year or, or or last year been like your highest grossing year in terms oh, yeah. of revenue? Oh yeah, ever, ever, ever. Last year with the let me see, I ran the the six, I believe. Let me see, I bought the one. Yeah, I ran six last year, Romel, and this is my high grossing year, and we hit two million. Two million. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. So and, and, and let me say this. Go ahead. You know, because because I know I'm gonna have some guys see they're gonna be like, but you had to remember cost of living in Louisiana mm. is low. So two mil in Louisiana is like four and five million in other places. <laughs> that's yeah, right. that's real because it don't cost me to live where I live at. We 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 boast about this, but I don't like the fact that they boast about this because it hurts us in other areas of our society. But my county is the lowest tax county in Louisiana. Mm. Lowest taxed. They boast about it, but it hurts us because our school system doesn't have uh, what it needs to be, what it needs to be. But that's a whole other story. But 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 we're the lowest tax council. So my cost of living down is down, which makes my profit even more magnified because it don't cost me that much to live. Right. And mm -hmm. what's typical margins? I mean, uh, margins percentage. Like, what are you like? What's the margins on that two million? Like, what gross to net? Gross. You mean like profit? Yeah, yeah. Profit out of that, um, out of that two million. After you take away the notes and all that over here, about seven fifty. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, not bad at all. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Well, at yeah, all. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, I'm trying to hit that M this year, though. I believe we'll hit that M. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. eight trucks, two more trucks, and the way that we're gonna be working day and night starting now, I think we'll hit that two. I mean, we'll hit that that profit of of that of that one M. You know, that's the word. That one M. M. Get to hit the M. 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 Yeah, For sure. All right. So, um, in terms of diversifying, are you looking to diversify any more, any other type of work? Or I am. Uh, it's funny you ask that because I was at the back of the show uh, last uh, yesterday, looking at that uh, tow truck, and I was talking with that guy uh, Crawley's about the tow truck business. That's something I had thought about, and something unique I thought that he said he doesn't deal with accident tows. He deals with specialty type stuff construction deliveries of construction equipment like skid steers and bobcats um and he's even told me he's been to baton rouge to the bmw he hauls cars he comes to baton rouge to pick up bmws to bring them over here to the bmw place over here to work on mm. stuff like that and i was like okay that's a unique niche he's right there he's niched himself yeah i was like okay i was i was thinking he deal because my thinking has always been okay i'm gonna need an acre or two to store because people ain't gonna come get these cars right Every tow truck company I see that deals with accidents, they got junkyards. Yeah. I don't want to deal with no junkyard. Yeah. And so when he said that, I was like, man, that's something to think about there. A little niche there, because I don't know if anybody's doing that in my area. So, But definitely always looking for ways to to diversify. We recently bought uh, some property and that had some uh, office and everything on it for our headquarters to move it from my house. And this place used to be a car lot. And so... I'm already brainstorming, okay, the trucks will be gone during the day. How can this building and property make money during the day right. while it's just sitting here? Right. And so I'm thinking about some things, just throwing it out there, flipping cars. I thought about slingshot, getting a slingshot. I always wanted one. <laughs> and then, but while it's sitting, okay, maybe that can make money. So car wash. So I'm thinking about some other things uh, that I want to get into. I'm already doing real estate. Um, and it, that's the thing. You make this money from the business, but you need to use some of that money to fund other stuff, invest in real estate, stocks, that kind of thing, and, and use that to get started in other stuff. That's right. You know, and that way you're not pigeonholed into just that one thing. A hundred percent. What has changed? Because you've been in this business for a long time. Mm -hmm. What has changed the most in the business um, that you could identify? <laughs> I'm sure it's a lot, but what's like the main things for people coming in that that's different, you know, now from when you first got started? Oh, Wow. Um, I can name several. Talk to me. Um, the breed of the driver is different. That's for sure. I mean, um, when I started, you did what you had to do to make the day. If the air went out, you made the day. These guys, these day, the air go out, that made the breakdown. <laughs> that made the breakdown. <laughs> Call service. Oh man, look, they be ready to bring it in, man. I'm like. Just make the rest of the day. I'm gonna get the guy over to the to the house this evening. Right. Them doom dudes be ready to come in. Yeah. And I so I so the breed of the driver in that regard, in the regard that most of these youngsters they ain't fixing on nothing. They don't know how to do nothing. <laughs> and uh, so that's the biggest <laughs> thing, man. I'm used to that old hand. I mean, we could take 
some tire straps and patch something up just to make day. Because I'm thinking it's a big picture. We ain't going to let that cut our money. Right. But these guys don't be thinking like that. So you be like, okay, you know, we'll just stay there. You're going to be okay. Well, hey, sudden, such, such, such. You know, okay, well, that's that's fine. The light came on, but I know what that is. Go ahead and make the rest of the day. Right. You know, I'll have it checked out this evening. So the breed of the drive is different. Uh, obviously, the overhead, the pay hasn't caught up with overhead. I'll say that. That's a big difference. The insurance is, is out the wazoo in Louisiana. We're one of the worst in, in states for insurance. I was talking to some people at the exhibit hall about that. See, can they help us? So my thinking is trying to bring something back, not just for me, but for everybody on that end. So the insurance is different. The insurance is much higher. I mean, I went from when I started $300 a truck, $400 a truck, to now I'm paying for these new trucks close to $2,000, $2,500 insurance. So the insurance is saying, obviously, fuel. Fuel is different. You talk fuel is probably tripled or quadrupled. Uh, so those are some of me changes. And then just in the business now, um, back then, it probably was more camaraderie with the truckers. You know, we needed each other more, so we looked out for each other more. These this breed is every man for himself, and uh, and we still some of the older guys. We're you know I'm that old guy now, so we're trying to get these guys to understand. We need each other. We got a network together. If we come together, then it'll be easier for us work wise going to these companies. And to help each other when you you might not have nothing, or if I got a truck that ain't doing nothing, you could call me. Yeah. Right. And so it's that camaraderie amongst the truckers. One of the things, Ramel, I I I, I just I, I absolutely don't like, um, is that there's an assumption because we're doing it on the level we're doing it at. I don't need no help. In other words, I've gotten. <laughs> I've gotten not called because they're intimidated that I'm going to come and take over the job. Mm. You know what I mean? That kind of thing from the brothers, you know, you know, they, I can't tell you how many times I get left out because, you know, he don't need nothing. He doing good. Or he, he going, if he come over here, he know how to talk business. He, he might end up with, he take the job. It's just craziness like that. Right. So there's an intimidation thing. And so sometimes you feel like the lonely guy in the business, you know, and I, I regret that. I don't like that. Cause I'm just an everyday guy. I want to be one of the guys too, you know? And, uh, and I've tried to help who all I can help. But sometimes, uh, success also brings a measure of loneliness. You know, even amongst the guys that you work out there with, because there's an intimidation factor. There's this there's just not that same camaraderie. The guys that I came through with, you know, who I'm still cool with, you know, they, they don't be bothered by that. And they know I got that many trucks, but they'll still call. Hey, man, you, you, you ain't got nothing. Such and such is doing something. That's what I'm used to. Right. These guys don't do that. Mm. These newer guys. And so that's the only thing. I miss that camaraderie. Got it. Last question. So for anybody, and there's plenty of people who are looking to get into dump trucks, it's a very popular topic, especially on, you know, yeah, truck and hustle. Sure. What piece of advice would you would you give those guys looking to get into this business? What's the most important thing they need to think about before they get started? Research, research, research the business. I think that's the biggest thing. I think what I've seen, well, that's going to be my number one, research the business to learn all the ins and outs. Get all the information you can. More information creates a level of comfortability. I think people are panicky. A lot of anxiety is because of the lack of information. Just think about it. With anything, the more you get more information about something, the more comfortable you are. Don't get me wrong. There's, the, there, there's that eventual leap of faith that you have to take. But do the research and, and don't just think this is a money, money pit. You know, we can, you know, as you do on your channel, we can give the game, but we can't give you the hustle. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It takes truck and hustle. <laughs> Y'all got that right. You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right. That's it takes truck and hustle. We can give them the game, but it, you got to have some hustle with you. And uh, I've seen guys not work a Friday because they got to go pick the check up. Just craziness like that. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so you got to, you know, we we give you. You got to have the hustle. That's that's another thing. And then I think the last thing would be is be budget conscious. I've seen them come and go, Ramel, from balling out of control. Once that money hit their hands, they start doing good. They start seeing that kind of cash come in. They think, you know, there's an SL500, <laughs> you know, the doggone big boy Lexus. I'm like, 
in moderation, brothers, in moderation. Right. You know, it's okay to do that in, in moderation, though. you been out here six months, and this joker that we got a $100,000 car that's got, what, a $1,500, $2,000 note that's, that the business got to pay for. So look at the pressure you put on the business immediately before you've even established a foundation. That's right. So that's what I would tell them, man. You can't, you can't, don't ball too quick is where I would put it. No doubt. Don't I love, ball too quick. I love that. I love that. All right. So, um, you know, we're kind of wrapping it up. I think okay. we got to tell the story. I appreciate all the transparency sure. and all the information you dropped today. So traditionally in the show, <clears throat> we fit, finish off with two last things. One, we have to let everybody know where they can con contact you. Yeah. Learn more about yourself and more learn more about Seat Ye First all right. LLC. And then lastly, just a final thought, man. Just a final gem you want to leave the audience with. So let's start off with where people can connect with you directly. Um, the Country CEO on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and TikTok. They can connect with me on there. Um, we do consulting about the business, um, coaching, got a course, got the books out. And so they can hit the link tree up at slash the country CEO. And uh, the business name is Seeky First. We got our website on there. So they can hit that up at SeekyFirstLLC.com. Got it. Are you looking for any other guys right now? Hiring at all? I mean, drivers. Not at this time. We're full. Um, but you never know. Got it. <laughs> you happen. never know. Um, if anything, nights. I will entertain the thought of nights. I will say this. Because I say I'm going to run five, but don't tip me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> don't tip me. Got it. And then the fi final thought. Final it. thought. Yep. Um, you guys are doing great work. I, I love. Thank you for having me. For sure. uh, I just want to help people start dump truck businesses and live their dream that they've always wanted. And if you don't respect that, your whole perspective is whack. Hustle fam, this has been another amazing episode. You know what we do around this time. If you smell something burning, it's only a desire. Myself, Perry Seeky, first LLC, dump truck gang, we are out. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.